such a fine day today with the sun out it's a bit warm although it was cold this morning and such is the the weather the climate in in melbourne it changes throughout the day anyway i'd like to talk about changing seasons and dormancy this big red is going out of dormancy and it's starting to uh, to show signs of active growth and by that i mean if you look at the outer leaves the lower leaves they are all red pretty stressed it's how they look like back in winter but if you look closely in the center the leaves are bright green the newer leaves there's lots of them coming out this is telling me that uh, it's ready to enter active growth and uh, this happens when it's warm another example would be this Echeveria colorata branti again as the as shown earlier with the big red this one has colored outer leaves and the inner ones are bright green you would see the same pattern with many of my echeverias especially the the ones that are brightly colored in winter so this is a, a bluette or blue lagoon it's a bit red now but in summer it will turn more blue or purple it's the same story for this berkeley right now it's red but back in summer and autumn it was bright purple and blue so interesting how the colors change another sign that they're exiting dormancy is that the lower leaves or the, ro the whole rosette is starting to open up more back in winter this was more closed up and this lila china is now opening up in preparation for the warmer months although keep in mind that during summer during the very hot days of summer they will close up again because uh, to protect themselves from the excess heat it's the same story for the greener the green and blue rosettes like this glauca the lower leaves are now opening up yeah they're now spread out rather than just being compact although there's still some here that are compact like this one though in time it will open up again there's two more that are compact and here's another one that's started opening up here's some of my echeveria imbricatas the lower leaves again are opening up if you look at the centers the leaves are still more cupped this is probably leftovers from the colder months during winter and autumn it's pretty cool how they look like though from above they look compact but from the sides they look more like a ball than just something flat as they start to actively grow you would notice that the, the central stem seems to be more elongated in this case here the spaces between the lower leaves are small but the upper the upper portion it looks like it has etiolated a bit this is perfectly normal because it's starting to grow a bit more in time uh, this will get a bit more leggy and it will mean that it's time for me to chop them to force more offsets this embossed gem has a very bright center and it has fully opened up it's getting ready for spring well it's already spring but it was cold for the past few weeks but over the weekend it got really hot really warm and I think it signaled, uh, signaled for them to get out of dormancy and wake up. So if you look at the bottom, the leaves, the bottom leaves are now spread out. It's no longer compact. So it's, it looks, it seems like it's basking in the warm sun. But on the flip side, now we have these aeoniums, which we know are summer dormant. So they mostly are actively growing during the, the cooler months like autumn and winter 
and maybe the first half of spring and as you can see right now they're pretty pretty much colored up but th this used to be more green this type of green during winter and since they're starting to uh, transition into dormancy they have started coloring up so one of the first things you would notice is the the types which are normally brown purple black or the darker types they start to get get colored again and after that the center of the rosettes become less green so they turn either cream or maybe more brown and you'll also notice that they would start cupping and closing so during the warmer months especially during summer all of them would be closed up unlike uh, presently where they are open wide open this is just to protect themselves from the heat it's pretty much important to know when they are dormant because this would tell you when when's a good time to chop off heads chop off offsets propagate behead or whatever and in terms of these aeoniums the best time to do this would be right after winter or at the end of winter all right basically anytime when they're actively growing i prefer the end of winter because i'd like them to grow first before i cut them but for the sake of simplicity i try to do any propagation during spring so that i can do it at the same time as the others you know it's just easier schedule wise and besides i'm out and about in the garden during spring anyways because in winter it's too cold to do anything these pots have been sitting in this area for quite a while now at least a week i think and i think it's about time that i move some of them out into the sun because i've been slowly acclimatizing them and i think some of them are ready to get more sun so those that came from the shade will be moved out into this pot so just outside the, the edgers they would be replacing the ones that i have here and these little guys i could move them out into the open now so they would just be moving up to the next level of exposure so this is where the next level is these are just out in the open there's no cover here and they receive sun sunlight from morning till the afternoon so all of the plants that i have here are hardy and have been exposed to the sun for quite a while and i'm fairly com confident that they will make it in summer these guys have been out here for a while so they can now step up to the full sun area all i have to do is to transfer them slowly one by one they will join all the rest of these they are fully stressed by the sun so they still are retaining their colorful hues the echeveras will definitely enjoy this pot especially once they're actively growing right now they're still looking sad with their winter damage but in time over the next few weeks they would recover I keep getting questions about my flapjack so just so you know I have it in this spot where it's getting full sun and you can see as you can see almost everything is red including the base it's just fully stressed that's all I'm not really worried about leaving them out in the open especially when it's raining because as you can see most of them have most of them are in terracotta pots 
and this allows water to seep out of the walls so there's no real risk of overwatering. but again this largely depends on your climate because in my climate especially in the warmer months it's not humid so I, I don't have to worry much about moisture so these guys have been moved to a more sunny spot they will be staying there for the next few weeks until they get more hardy and by then I can move them into the spot which receives much more sun there's a reason why I keep the younger plants and the newly potted plants there in the eaves and as you progressively get further from the eaves the, the bigger plants can be found in these locations so if you're also wondering why I have this spot pretty far from the alfresco it's mainly because this is my neglect spot so all the plants that I have here would be pretty much neglected except maybe when it rains or when I need to water them they're far away from the house so there's no real temptation for me to go here unless I just want to have a look so it's more of a physical you know the physical act of walking here that makes them neg neglected it takes a conscious decision from me to go here rather than just popping out of the door and seeing the, the small plants immediately and as I keep saying most of my plants thrive on tender loving neglect this spot by the steps is starting to get crowded so I'm going to give them a shower now because I might have to work on this the next few days or over the weekend I'm thinking that maybe I could remove some of them and rearrange the, the aeoniums because they're starting to creep even further from the wall. I'm thinking of transferring this aeonium urbicum into a larger pot because right now I have it in a tiny plastic pot and although it doesn't have roots yet I think it's better if I move it somewhere bigger so I don't have to transfer it for quite a while so maybe I could put it uh, put it in this terracotta pot which is 25 centimeters in diameter so I think it's worth the time doing it now since this one doesn't have roots yet and it's been recently beheaded recently chopped some of, it, some of its lower leaves are falling off and drying out. This is perfectly fine. They do this when they're extremely stressed, such as now where it has no roots yet. But all I'm going to do is keep this in the shade, bright shade, and not water it for a while until I think, until I think it has grown some roots and you can generally test that by just tugging at it a bit see if it offers any resistance and in the case of this aeonium i think i'll just have to leave it all the way until autumn because it's supposed to go dormant anyway so i'll just keep this uh, relaxing in the shade and not but and neglect it for a while and it's finally in the pot i'm going to keep it there until maybe it grows large enough because I'm I'm sort of thinking of planting it in the soil so it can grow even larger for now this heavy pot is going to stay on the floor under the eaves well near the edge of the eaves together with my propagation station and it will be left there until maybe until the end of summer or maybe until autumn and by then when I see signs of the other aeonium outside are starting to grow again or are starting to get out of dormancy then that's the time I'm going to plant this directly on the soil or until it starts having roots or well, whichever comes first 
And the last thing I'll do before calling it a day is to separate this Beni Musume. This, there's this pup which is quite large now. I'm going to separate it from the mom plant. That way, the other pups would have more space to grow into. They are now in separate pots and thus ends another day of gardening.